genommen hast für unser Interview heute. Hello Marcus, really great that you've taken time for our interview today. You lead the Urban Life Church in Ludwigsburg in Germany, South Germany. And I know you a little bit because my family, my daughter and my son-in-law are members in your church. And I'm really happy about that. I'm really happy to have heard lovely stories over the years about the church and I know that the church started like a small group like about 20 or 30 and now you have over 500 uh, attendees on a Sunday and that's happened in 12 years. Is that re true? Yes, it is. Yes, our topic is today how to, uh, how to do a, a meeting on a Sunday. And you have meetings on Sundays that are very, yeah, you know, they're very inviting. And I'd like to speak about this. And maybe the first question I would ask is, if you think about a church meeting, what is your main goal in your heart? Or what is the main topic in your heart? Thank you once again for the invitation with this interview. I was really happy about it. Yes, Sunday is the central day of our week. We always look forward to it. We celebrate and fever towards that day. And for us, what is absolutely central to that is that it should be a, a place where people really want to come to. It should be that place where people that belong to our church are so inspired that you don't even have to say, please come, invite your friends, your neighbors, your family, but it's a place where they actually from themselves come and invite and absolutely want to invite all their friends and family, etc. And when you ask what our main focus is for this Sunday, what is the most important thing for us, I would say is that people make decisions for Jesus. That's the main thing. We start from that point. That is our wish that people that don't know Jesus at all will make decisions for Jesus, that they would repent and, and turn to Jesus. But also people for people who are already with Jesus, that they will make fresh surrenders and consecrations to him and, and have him the center of their lives. And that's what we want to do every Sunday to accompany these people that these decisions are made and of course everybody that comes should be encouraged and should go home with more hope they should have something relevant that they can use for their everyday life and of course we also want to connect people we don't want anyone to come and then go the way they came alone but we want them to build relationships with people they have a um, opportunity that we always offer and that is for people who are interested in the church that they can do the next steps with us they can find out who we are as a church and what our values are etc and so we want them to come as yeah as soon as possible to get into this and then the second thing that we have as a goal is that people get into small groups we don't want to build a church where people are just sunday morning uh, visitors or event visitors we want people that are integrated into small groups and we want to reach it on Sunday already where we can connect people and that can be connected to small groups. So those are our main focuses for a Sunday and everything we do and everything we organize is for these decisions and people take the next steps. And you certainly have, yeah, you have probably have a lot that you have to plan beforehand. It doesn't just happen on its own. I'm sure you are very very intentional and have thought through everything, every meeting. Yeah, one has to uh, make a lot of decisions. And maybe can you tell us some of the elements that you see as important in a meeting that's actually that the things that you've described can be reached? Yes, 
I believe that it always begins that one has an understanding as a church that we're working together. That means that you have one spirit, that unity, that we say we're building church together and to create an atmosphere. This is so important. You can have the best meeting with the amazing program, but if there's no, if there's no real atmosphere and, and true spirit, people will say, well, a good program, but I don't actually want to be part of it. That's why we always try to, yeah, to um, create this. And it's not easy because we have to build everything up. We've got to create the atmosphere every Sunday. And for that, we need every gift possible so that everybody can get involved. And we say you can be part of the whole thing. It's Ephesians 4, uh, where we say you're, you're part of that. Um, you, you can come and be part of it. And that's something that people can belong to and be part of it. And so Sunday doesn't begin at 11 o'clock when the meeting starts. It actually starts at 7 o'clock where we start building up. And, and then we have a team building element where we bring the whole team together, that we pray together. That's at 10 o'clock. And, and we have little groups that are responsible just for the, the um, procedure, the, uh, yeah, and then we have a look at everything that's planned. And this gives us security and, and also a joy to be part of the whole. And then, of course, at 11 o'clock, the meeting starts and we plan our meeting so that we say, we want it compact. We don't want it boring and drawn out. We want a compact meeting. And so from the beginning, we have a 75 minute uh, meeting. Now we have a, a 1130. So we've got to watch carefully how, how we do it. Yeah, 65, 75, we've got to see how we cope with it. Um, because we have two meetings now. So the elements that we have, the, the sequence we have is that we start with a song, a corporate song. We've seen it's good. People arrive and they settle, they feel good. And that comes after a countdown. And then we greet the people. And I know when I came to Ludwigsburg, it was always a greeting. And whoever did the greeting always had like a mini preach. And he would carry on and from, from Genesis to, Ex uh, to Revelation. And we said, we want to take the people along with us. We want to have that um, thread through the meeting that they eventually have a decision. We don't want, um, yeah, we don't just, yeah, we don't want to start with the, a sermon in the beginning. We want to take the people along with us. We want to say, it's really great that you're with us. It's great that you're part of this and we want to look to God. And then we go to the next part, to the worship part. And it's also very important in the meeting that we understand that we start with worship. We don't start with other things. We start with worship. And, and the reason is because we give God the honor with everything first. If we have problems, regardless what has happened, we want to give God the honor that he knows he's the number one. And that's why we start with worship. And worship opens so much in the atmosphere as we exalt him in praise and worship. And that's why we do this. We want to also create an atmosphere where people say, wow, we really sense God's presence here. And so then we carry on and we don't have a long part here. We have three songs that we sing together. And it's not just one song after the other. We actually look between the songs that things can be moderated, that we can also take the people along with us, that we can encourage them to get into the songs. So the songs are 
a progression, but every worship leader can decide how can I take those people in? How can I take them deeper? It's about taking them deeper. And we want to help them to really get involved, that, that they will make decisions. And so three songs and then and then the moderator will come or the MC and at that point in time will lead will close off that section and then go to the next point and then normally yeah when it wasn't corona time we would have a part that would call meet and greet so that means that we then that we say hey there's so many people here in this room look around you see who's there look for someone that you don't know give them a high five get to know them connect each other connect with them that's as we said in the beginning we want to connect people and we want to build a culture where everybody is taken with and so we have that part i know that some people have another understanding of this, uh, you know, with law, praise and worship and sermon and it must be a sermon and praise and worship together. It must be connected. But we say you can do it like that. But for us, it's not, a, it's not about one's more spiritual, but we can... We want to build in that part that's also spiritual, that you can get to know people. And that's why it's a, a value, an absolute foundational value, that the welcome team is there and they're also connecting with people. So, in the corona time, we've had to make that a bit different. We can't do a real high five, we do an air high five. And it's not two minutes, it's 15 seconds. Yeah, and so then what we do is we'll show a video, then we just the important news is shown that every every church has news every week. And sometimes it can be so boring listening to all the news and so on. But sometimes there's a list of seven or eight things that are like once-off things, and it can become very boring. And that's how we say every week those things are then um, summarized, and then we have music and animation and so on, and we show that. Yes, and it works. It actually looks lovely. And then what we do... We have somebody coming up and they explain to people what it means to give. We never used to do that, but we feel we want to do it now because I think we've seen it's also a, a responsibility for us to teach the people to be generous. And so we then encourage the people with a two-minute short input what is giving in general, not just about tithing, but it's in giving so that people have an opportunity to give. And then after that, we have news. That's three or four news items. Not more than that. We don't want to give a whole lot of news items. We want to say what is the most important that they need to take with them. Yeah, so, yeah, too much they go away not even remembering anything. And then we close with the, the sermon. And that's usually 25 to 30 minutes. And then at the end of the, the sermon, we want to lead the people to that point where they can think about this topic and at the end of the preach we usually play some music uh, one or two of the musicians will come forward and play uh, the instruments and whatever that point is we'll yeah on sunday it was identity for example and then we'll in invite the people if they if they don't know their identity in Christ, that we pray for them. We don't call them forward, but we pray for them from the stage. And this is, this is also part of what we do. We give them a chance to um, think about what was spoken about. And then at the end of the meeting, very clearly, we give the gospel and invite people to give their lives to Jesus. And that's the 
most lovely time when people actually respond and we do lead them in a prayer and and then we have a refrain a song until the moderation the MC comes up again and and then says if you've been touched or something has really meant something to you you can come forward and there's there'll be a team that will pray with you so then we remind them about the next steps then we have the last song and the last song is a song that we always celebrate it's a song where we celebrate jesus like we say we're doing this party with jesus and then the meeting is over so we try and keep that thread running through the meeting yeah so that means we don't want strange um, pauses in between and, and people feel awkward yeah and so when the meeting's over so it's not totally in uh, it's an end then does one have an opportunity to speak to people and then you do you bring the people together again or to talk about the meeting or after that yes well between the meetings we have an hour between our two meetings and it's not much so what we do then is they have something to eat um, they just yeah just regenerate a bit and then uh, with us we have a production meeting where one just stands together just goes through all the points quickly what was good what wasn't good what could we do better and then we go into the second meeting and that happens in turn the other things that uh, is important is that we need to connect with the people with the next steps integrate people into church into small groups etc and people are very actively connecting with people all the time and that's the sunday and then the second round begins so when it comes to feedback um, you asked about that we actually feedback on every area that we did on Sunday we have feedback about the whole thing to see what is good and what could we do better so um, when do you have your second meeting is it like 15 minutes 20 minutes so what we do 20 minutes before the meeting we have a production meeting and it's usually just five minutes and then after that the people can go to their places and the worship team have a few more minutes just to go through the sequence and then they go on to the stage and then it continues and Marcus later on when is your bigger feedback time is that in your pastor's team in the week or is it on a zoom meeting how do you do that and who is part of that well we do have a feedback with every meeting and that's part of our staff meeting we discuss the meetings at our staff meeting and all the relevant people are there it's also the worship pastor the the production manager for the whole um, technical side and sound the creative team all those the important people that head up the sections and we get we have a list that we've prepared and we've also have that on our drive and we can even during the meeting we can actually go onto that document even during the meeting and find it and write things down because you know sometimes you can leave a meeting and the points that you were wanting to remember you forget so we've got this online document that's saved and it has different categories but it's all everything from children to worship to welcome team to production it's everything and we fill everything in that we've noticed and so on that means on the wednesday when we come together we can come and go through with a structure and a structured way we can look at the various points and we can say so what were the good points what's what do we need to improve 
and then we have a look very intensively at this. Otherwise, the meetings, yeah, what, what does help that we can have a look, the staff can have a look, and this is a real help. And you can give people very good feedback then. So, um, yeah, it's also from the perspective that you see the people there. I, I like to be with the people, and that happens on a Wednesday. That's our staff meeting. And then also the, the things that we've realized that need to be improved, we, we categorize them and we write it in a protocol and um, the people that have to actually carry that out then will take that and do it better next Sunday. So a summary of this whole meeting, planning and um, the carrying out of it is definitely that you have a, a real value, you lay value on excellence, is that right? You really want it to be excellent. And that is also that, that is part of just having that goal. We want to have it that people invite their friends to the meeting so that they can experience all you've described. Yes, that's right. Great. 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 And then I have another question. The people that sit at the table when you're planning these meetings, are these the same people in your staff meeting that are giving feedback? And they then do you then decide on the next meeting straight away, or is this another meeting? Is it like every month or so before a meeting, like a month before the meeting, or maybe you can just comment on that. Yes. Okay. So actually, the way we do it is we have a very standard meeting, really. The elements are fixed. There's not really much that has changed because we've proven that it works and it's good. That means, so in your average, the the um, the way the meeting is run, we don't have to plan any, any extra things as such. So we discuss that at a staff meeting and then there are just little things that we may need to do and say, okay, there's this or that. And then, then we um, look at the meeting and then we take it to the producer and he's, yeah, he takes a theory and puts it into practice. So he, yeah, he looks at the screen, where the screens are there, the videos, the slides, the, yeah, how we do the one thing, we go from the one thing to the next, um, all these things, and we do a, a basic plan, and then we hand that over to the producer, and then he carries that out with the people that he needs, that's the normal way we do it. And so we know that there's a very clear, um, a clear procedure. And then we have the specials, and that we have a, a team that we have that only focus on these specials. For example, we've just had a baptism um, the week before last, and they had to really show, they had to work on that. How do we make this nice for those that are being baptized? How can we um, create that day to be something special? And we give it to them, and they carry on with that. And they think through the thing, and then they also discuss it and then we t we take those things that they've discussed and then we build that into our meeting and then afterwards we give that to the producer again so he can see how he can then fit that in and yeah and it's very tight it's not like um it's a different team every week no we have a a team that is set in for that and we have these teams, and these teams discuss it, and then know who they then pass it on to others. And that's how it works. And preaching topics, your, your preaching topics. Do you discuss that together? Does everyone decide on their own what they want to preach for themselves? How can we imagine that? Yes, we 
we try to do both. We don't want to just let everything be run free that everyone does their own thing and prepares their own sermons. No, we have a plan. It's usually a year. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, we, we as a church, we say, where do we want to go? And then what we do, we take the planning and we say after summer, every September, until August, we say, okay, we'll plan from September to August. It's, it's the school year. That's a year in that time. We have a look and we say, okay, what is happening in our church right now? The, the rhythms that we have, for example, when the small groups start every uh, twice a year, and in October, it's clear that we maybe need more fellowship in the small groups, but then there's also the calendar things that that we have this Christmas, this Easter, this all these things, and we've got to have a look at the new year. Um, what are we going to do? And we we do have a central thing where we as leaders, me as the the senior pastor with our, my co-pastor and some assistants, we think about what topics are we wanting to cover. And and what series do we want to do? What is what what culture are we wanting to form here? What yeah? What rhythms do we want? And and that we then, as I said, with the small groups, we have a look at that, and then we decide on series. But then we also sometimes give the preachers just that freedom to say whatever's on your heart, go for it. And it has to be something really good, and it's usually good because it comes from their hearts. And it, yeah, so we don't want to just be on one side, but we want a balance in this. Hey, you've really given us a lot today. So many, yeah, you know, challenging things that you've actually shared with us. And I'm sure we'll even be able to look at some things just to, yeah, just to look at our meetings, all of us, to see how we can really have them the way we want them. And so at this point in time, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And we really are excited about and we're happy about what's happened in your church and what is happening. And I'm so glad we're in contact. And thank you. Thank you for your input. It's been Really um, valuable. Thank you, Marcus. Bye.